So you like statically typed programming languages and you see a lot of jobs advertised for C-sharp developers, and there are. So you might be asking yourself, is this a good language to learn? Well, in today's video, that's the question that we're going to answer. I'll take you through some of the history of C-sharp so that you have a little bit of context, and then we'll look at the different applications of the language. We'll look at some of the current trends, we'll be comparing C-sharp to some other programming languages, and I'll leave you having answered the question, is it worth you learning this? C-sharp was released in 2002, and it was developed by Microsoft as a part of its .NET initiative. The original goal of C-sharp was to create an object-oriented programming language that would be easy to use and would run on the Microsoft platform. C Sharp is part of the C family of programming languages, so basically it has curly brackets and semicolons. And it was, of course, heavily influenced by C++. And indeed, the sharp sign is apparently two pluses underneath each other, like that. I'm told, anyway. C Sharp code is compiled into an intermediary instruction language, which is then executed using just-in-time compilation in .NET. So in that respect, it's fairly similar to Java. Java is executed using just-in-time compilation on the Java virtual machine. In fact, for a long time, people rather rudely referred to C-sharp as Microsoft Java. But at some point, these two languages began taking very different paths. Java started to become less sought after as other JVM languages came out with more modern feature sets, and C-sharp, surprisingly, actually started to become more appealing. As things like functional programming and parallel programming became popular, Microsoft was very proactive about updating the c -sharp language to add all of these things in and keep it up to date. And that's why there's two different ways to start an async task in c -sharp, and there's two different ways to map an array and that sort of thing. It's because the language has had features added to it while still remaining backwardly compatible. The main factor behind c -sharp's evolution into a more modern programming language, however, was undoubtedly Microsoft's decision to build a cross-platform compiler. You see, up until 2014, the main way to run c -sharp was on .NET Framework, and that had to be run on Windows. There was a separate open source effort to make a cross-platform compiler called Mono, but for most developers, writing c -sharp meant running Windows. And then in 2014, Microsoft completely rewrote the .NET compiler, and they made it all open source under the non-profit .NET Foundation. And they also made it entirely cross-platform. And this was a real signal from Microsoft that they were going to start embracing the open source community instead of uh, fighting against it. And that's an attitude that would eventually see them go on to acquire GitHub. But anyway, back to c -sharp. So this new cross-platform version of .NET was originally called .NET Core, and it's now just called .NET, and it really does run just as well on Linux machines as it does on Windows. Microsoft accompanied this with the new CLI tools and a new cross-platform IDE called Visual Studio Code. You might have heard of that. And ultimately, this is the modern world that C-sharp developers live in. You no longer have to write C-sharp applications on a Windows machine and run them on a Windows server. You can write C-sharp on a Mac if you want to, and then containerize it with Docker, and then deploy it to a Linux box on AWS if you want to, and plenty of people do that. There are four main things that people use C-sharp to build, and this is important if it's a language that you're considering learning. Firstly, back-end web applications. There is this web framework called ASP.NET that uses C-sharp as the language, and it has controllers and middleware and all of the things you'd expect from a modern web application framework. ASP.NET uses something called Razor Pages to render HTML templates on the server. It looks like this with these tags to embed C-sharp code into the template um, and to do conditional rendering and stuff like that. The second application of C-sharp is the Unity game engine. Unity is an extremely popular game engine that is used to create more than half of all mobile applications, and the Unity scripting API is generally used with C-sharp. The third application for C-sharp is a framework called Xamarin. Xamarin is a fairly mature mobile framework for creating cross-platform and native mobile applications in C-sharp. If you're considering learning c -sharp to expand your career options, then Xamarin is worth knowing about because there are a lot of demand for mobile app developers are using Xamarin. And lastly, there's an emerging application of c -sharp, and that's for building front-end web applications with WebAssembly, and that's called Blazor. 
Now, Blazor is still rather in its infancy and widespread use of it is yet to be seen. But if you want to get into WebAssembly and you're considering C-sharp, then Blazor is certainly something I would take a look at. It definitely works very well and it can be a lot of fun to play around with it. So those are the four main use cases for C-sharp that you need to be aware of if you're considering this as a language to learn. So back to the title of this video, is C-sharp a language worth learning? Well, in so much as every new language you learn will expand your knowledge of software engineering as a whole, it will expose you to new ways of solving problems, it will expose you to new patterns, new syntax, new applications. And so with that in mind, then yes, absolutely. C Sharp is worth at least experimenting with and learning a little bit of. You can find some excellent C Sharp tutorials on Microsoft's website itself, link in the description below. But here on Train to Code, I'm gonna be posting a few videos over the coming weeks about C Sharp. So look out for those videos with a purple background in a thumbnail. And I'll also make a YouTube playlist, which will be linked below. To get notified of my C Sharp videos, you will of course need to subscribe to this channel. So do that now and leave any comments or suggestions in the comments section below. That's all from this video. So until next time, goodbye.